On December 31st, 2019, a seafood market in Wuhan, China was shut down after officials reported that it was connected to an outbreak of a viral pneumonia in the city. Now, over a year into the COVID-19 pandemic, little is still known about where the virus came from. You have to have really good situational awareness so that you can put out these embers before you end up with a wildfire. The World Health Organization sent a group of 17 international experts to Wuhan to work with Chinese collaborators on an in-depth search for COVID-19's origins. Members of the group are now sharing details on their findings. It's about gathering uh, all these disparate bits of information. How did their investigation change what we know about the virus? And how long could it be before we have definitive answers on how the outbreak started? It's critical to understand where this virus came from so that we can understand how to stop future outbreaks going forward. It's not about finger pointing, it's just about understanding it so that we know how to do better in the future. Since the first discovery of a mystery virus in late 2019, researchers have been trying to pin down exactly where COVID-19 came from. Their search begins with the seafood market in Wuhan, China, which was shut down on December 31st after doctors identified it as a link between a number of mystery cases of pneumonia in the city. As researchers try to juggle contact tracing, environmental testing, and the challenges of an outbreak, the virus began to spread across the globe. On January 13th, the first known case of COVID-19 was reported outside of China. Two more countries would report their first cases in the next few days, and more would follow. Many initial cases were in people who had recently traveled from China, but as the outbreak grew, local transmission became more common. By March, 100 countries and territories reported at least one case of COVID. 200 countries and territories reported at least one case by April. By early 2021, over 100 million cases were reported across more than 220 countries and territories. So look back on exactly what happened in China. That was still not very clear. The WHO really wanted to get their people in there to figure out what had gone wrong. And the ideal time to do an outbreak investigation is right at the time when the outbreak starts. But I think we've got to remember that this was an incredibly difficult period for the people in Wuhan. You know, they had many tens of thousands of cases. Early in the pandemic, researchers say that they determined that the virus likely had zoonotic origins, meaning it made a jump from animals to people. Zoonotic disease outbreak is gonna happen when you have humans in contact with an animal that's been infected with a virus. It could be handling the animal, it could be eating the animal, it could be the process of preparing that animal for market. And zoonotic outbreaks could happen anywhere. But a more in-depth investigation would be needed to understand how the virus made its way into the human population. Investigations like this can take years to complete. Our best analogy for this pandemic is what almost happened in 2003 with SARS-1. SARS-1 emerged as best as we can tell from a bat cave in China, then went to an intermediary animal, and then to humans. It took several years of investigation after the SARS-1 outbreak to even get to that point. A year after the first cases were reported, the WHO appointed a team of virologists, epidemiologists, and zoologists to investigate the origin of the virus in Wuhan. A report detailing their findings offers some leads about where the virus might have come from, but it's also been plagued with controversy. There have been allegations that the Chinese authorities were not entirely forthcoming, that perhaps certain raw data was withheld. Nevertheless, this report is the best and most thorough investigation we have at understanding what did happen in those early months in the pandemic and where we can go from here. The team visited several locations in Wuhan that could offer clues about the origin of COVID-19. One of the locations was the Huanan Seafood Market, the market in Wuhan which was associated with the first known cluster of cases. Wet markets like this sell meat, fruits, and vegetables and are an essential low-cost resource for their surrounding communities. Some markets also have stalls that sell farmed wild animals. Early environmental testing in the market found traces of the virus on some surfaces, Investigators determined three likely pathways of emergence for how the virus could have made its way into the market and other markets like it. The three theories that they have narrowed this down to all have to do with bats. 
bats are mammals. They are related to us, even though they can fly. Researchers feel pretty confident about bats because of what they know about the way these coronaviruses circulate in bat populations and because of prior experience with coronavirus coming from bats. Theory number one, bats give it to an intermediary animal, which then gives it to a person, although they don't know for sure what that intermediary animal is. Theory number two, a bat gave it directly to a person. This could happen because someone was out there hunting or logging or just in nature with bats in the area that bats live. The third possibility is that it started in bats, but then somehow got into an animal that was frozen for food and then transported longer distances. And that would mean that the bat cave or that intermediary reservoir could potentially be farther away. The World Health Organization says that researchers in China have tested 50,000 samples from 300 different species, but none have been positive for SARS-CoV-2. They tested wildlife that were coming from wildlife farms in, in the market, and it looks like those animals, some of those animals, were of the type that could carry a coronavirus. So it's not a smoking gun, but it's a clue. The swabbing and sampling that was done was done after the outbreak. And what we really want to know is what was there before the outbreak began in early December. Despite the earliest cluster of cases having an association with the market, a large portion of cases appeared to have no connection at all. In order to better understand where else the virus was circulating, another location they visited was the Hubei Provincial Hospital of Integrated Chinese and Western Medicine, where some of the first cases of COVID were treated. Here, and at several other hospitals they visited in the area, they looked at early sequencing data from the virus. Viral sequencing is where we take the genetic material of the virus and determine its structure. It's like contact tracing, but using molecular biology. Like most viruses, SARS-CoV-2 mutates over time, and its genetic makeup can change as it's passed between people. If two people have a strain of the virus that have the same sequence, it means that they likely caught the virus from a common source. But if their sequences are different, it means that they likely caught the virus from different places. They may have a common source further back in the history of that virus's life, but its genetic sequence has changed as it's been passed through different people. The more different sequences there are, the more likely it is that the virus had more time to circulate and has passed through more places. If everything in Wuhan in December was exactly the same sequence, then there must have been a common source, but they're not. What was happening in Wuhan in December was already the spread of a couple of different minor variants of the virus. And that again suggests that maybe the virus had been circulating a little bit longer than people had realized. The team also said that the multiple early sequences found likely means that the Huanan seafood market was not the primary source of the outbreak. We know that in the first 170 cases in December, not all of them had exposure to that market. The market was certainly an amplifier, but probably not the actual source of the whole outbreak, as far as we can tell at this stage. One of the final locations they visited was the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This lab and several others in the city were the targets of a politically charged theory that the virus had accidentally leaked from a lab. Researchers have stated that prior genomic sequencing showed that the virus had natural origins. The idea of some sort of bioterrorism event it was not even considered. What this investigation is looking for is something like an accidental lab leak. Perhaps a scientist at, went out into the field, collected a sample, brought it back to a laboratory to be studied, and it was accidentally introduced into the community in China. Lab leaks do occur. Fortunately, they're rare. We did discuss with them their biosecurity measures and so on what they were doing around staff health and had they gone back and checked their stuff, uh, they didn't find anything. While these labs were studying viruses, even some bat-borne ones, the team says that they found it highly unlikely that the virus had leaked from any of these facilities. So the most closely related bat virus called RATG13 is only actually a genetic sequence. It's not a live virus. It's hard to postulate then that you could have a leak from something like that. We've not ruled anything out. We can't rule anything out. Science can't rule things out like that. But what we did find is that the lab escape was extremely unlikely. In their report, the team concluded that the most likely pathway of transmission was from a bat to an intermediary animal. 
we know that there's a whole range of coronaviruses and that a number of these have already moved across into humans, such as SARS, a range of viruses that are related to SARS-CoV-2 have already been found. Now, they're still not close enough to be the parent virus, if you like, but it's a suggestion that very closely related viruses are in these animals. However, the team says that they have not fully ruled out any of the theories. This report effectively is laying the groundwork for future scientific research. And so in the years and months to come, they're giving us kind of a guiding light. Like, let's focus our energy in these, this particular direction because we think that this is the most likely. So what needs to happen now is the next steps. Tracing back the first cases, what other markets did they go to, for instance? Trace back to the suppliers of the market and see if they had unusual spikes of antibodies. Animals that we know are susceptible, we should look at where we have concentrations of those. If this pandemic hasn't taught us anything, it should have driven home this point that an infection anywhere is potentially an infection everywhere. So we need really good disease surveillance. As population increases, as we encroach upon areas with wild animals, as we continue to have climate change, we will see more viruses jumping from animals to humans, and we're going to see more disease emergence events.